Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to my basement finishing project. Uh, it's hard to believe, but it's right around a year ago that I started this project, and it was just bare, poured concrete walls in the beginning. So, in this episode, which is a, in the sub-series on building my wine cellar, I'm going to show you how I did this uh, beautiful white oak trim on the exterior door to the wine cellar. So this door is masonite, it's, it, it, but it is sort of stained to look like white oak. The grain's a little different, the color's a little different, and then I was using real oak. So what I really tried to accomplish here was get at least the tone of the two the same so they look complementary. I feel pretty good about that. And then really pick some beautiful pieces of oak and let sort of the grain of that wood shine. Just as an example, this cross piece right here I selected because it has this really nice ray fleck from this piece being quarter sawn uh, white oak. I've built up uh, this crown molding uh, and all of the pieces here from a variety of different white oak sources. Uh, this one in particular, I cut this cove on the table saw. So I'm not, this is not instructional really, but I'm gonna show how I did that. Uh, but this piece here, uh, I'm not showing the inside trim, which is a little bit different, but this, this crown piece and then its, its partner on the inside both came from a transition piece that used to lead, or was supposed to lead from my shop out into the rest of the, of the basement. But that was kind of a long-winded introduction, but please follow along and enjoy. Uh, really pleased with how this trim came out and just sets off what I think is a super cool looking door into my super cool wine cellar. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell notification below if you'd like to learn about future videos. Thank you. Okay, so I have this piece I cut here. This is gonna be my crown molding. So I started with that square, cut off that 45, leaving the sort of lips on both edges. Next, I've set up on my table saw, I have two parallel guides here. Those are clamped down securely, and they go over top of, instead of my normal 10 inch blade, I have eight inch dado blade in there. So I'm gonna, I've set this up at an angle and then I'm going to go across, pass after pass, slowly raising the blade uh, to create the uh, cove that I want on the inside of this crown molding. So um, I'm, I haven't done this before. I'm not obviously don't, I'm not great at it. So what I'm going to do is one pass and then rotate, flip, and go the other direction to keep it symmetrical. So fingers crossed. Let's see how this goes. So here I have this crown molding piece straight off of the table saw. So I cut the cove, went back and forth on both sides. Um, I'm certainly going to get better at doing that on the table saw with some practice, but it's sort of got the job done. Uh, so it's more or less the shape that I want to have. There's kind of a hump in the middle. So the idea is to bring this into a really nice smooth curve and get it nice and smooth and ready for finish. And I'm going to do that with two primary tools. So I have this antique molding plane here. So I have a set of, of rounds and hollows. This is a round. Um, so the blade comes out on the bottom. It's pretty darn close to the radius I'm looking for here. So I should be able to remove the bulk of the material there. And then I just got a piece of PVC pipe that's very close to that same uh, diameter. I'm just gonna wrap that in sandpaper and work my way through the grits and hopefully we'll end up with something that looks great and takes finish well and looks good in the final door. So let me just get to work on that. Mm -hmm. 